Welcome back to my Anunnaki telenovela, the stories no one has told you before. If you'd like to catch up, there is a playlist and you can watch all of the previous episodes. These are stories of the Anunnaki gods that happened back on Nibiru before they even came to Earth. And they are my favorite. We are at the point of the reign of King Lamu. All the princes at the royal court of Nibiru were all getting very upset. And this is because King Lamu was not doing his job. He was more occupied with his beautiful wife than to actually take care of the problems that Nibiru was having. Their atmosphere was breached, there was famine, people were infertile, women weren't able to breastfeed, there, was, there wasn't enough food and water. It was a calamity. And instead of worrying about that, he was just worrying about living his life out with his queen. So the princes at the royal court were upset. And the king was accused of being stupid, literally. They also accused him of being irrational and said that he made things worse instead of better on Nibiru. All of a sudden, you saw a whole bunch of groups that wanted to rebel, and they went to the warehouses where they had their weapons in storage and started pulling them out. A revolt seemed to be stirring up. The first prince to take up arms in the royal palace was Prince Alalu. You might remember this name if you know about the Anunnaki because Alalu is technically the king that came to earth and discovered that they had gold and therefore was able to save their planet and their atmosphere. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. So Alalu stirs up all the other princes in the palace. He's instigating them, provoking them, and goes on and on to say how stupid King Lamu was. And all of the other princes listen to what he said. So Alalu gets all these princes together and says, come on, let's go scare the king. Let's leave his throne empty. Basically saying that they want to run him off. And he was so convincing that they all went rushing to the throne room. They were described as going to the throne room as fast as rushing water. Now the throne room had a small entrance. So King Lamu, to escape this attack, this revolt, runs up into the tower. He is chased up into the tower by Alalu, and there a duel bursts out between them, which was probably unnecessary because due to the situation, Lamu might have just given up the throne. But Alalu, sneaky as he is, he had a plan. He was not going to let Lamu live. So this huge dual battle starts between them up in the tower and Lamu falls to his death by Alalu's hand. Alalu runs out screaming and yelling, Lamu is no more, no more Lamu, Lamu is no more. Alalu then rushes back to the throne room and sits on the throne as fast as he could with no council, no election, Nothing. He auto-proclaimed himself king. He announced to everyone that Lamu the king was dead. And he made himself king with no rights to it, actually. Now, some people were happy that Lamu was out of the way and had fallen to his death. But other people saw Prince Alalu as a king slayer. In the next episode, we will talk about the story of Alalu becoming king and traveling to Earth.